Good morning, everybody. Quick apology. My uh, business casual turned into very casual. My business stuff is somewhere between Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, here. So uh, I was eight years old when my father had his first heart attack. I was 12 when he had the second, and 20 when he had the third. It was fatal. He was 42 years old. Imagine how I felt when my daughter was 12 and my son was nine and I had my event. Uh, we've come a long way. We had come a long way in 1982. Unlike my father, I had the sweet pleasure of being able to see the faces of the four exceptional young people you see in that, in that uh, photo. Um, we're actually celebrating Joni and my 50th wedding anniversary in Times Square of last, um, last November. She looks a lot younger for some reason. <laughs> so um, I have come a long way, uh, thanks to perhaps some of the people in this room because of their innovation, and of course, always grateful to the research efforts, advocacy, and programs of the American Heart Association. But if you happen to be the person that's about to have a heart attack in the next 40 seconds, and if you're lucky enough to survive, your dance will have just begun. Clearly, we have come a long way. We just haven't come far enough. Hopefully, days like this will continue to offer inspiring hope because I must tell you, I do worry which genes these four grandchildren of mine have inherited. So it can't come fast enough for me, and the AHA believes that also. So let me share a great example of AHA inside. The AHA is a leader in developing science-based treatment guidelines known to improve outcomes for heart disease and stroke patients. But getting those guidelines consistently used in patient care has been a challenge. Through the Guideline Transformation and Organization Initiative, the Heart Association is working to accelerate science into practice to provide patients, providers, and systems tools and resources that can be used to better manage care. With support from AstraZeneca, we are first at, uh, tracking non-STEMI ACS, a type of heart attack that affects over 515,000 Americans each year. Our goal is to prevent recurrent heart attacks by improving the treatment and care of survivors. Research indicates that navigating the road to recovery after a heart attack is challenging for patients, as many don't understand the con their conditions or necessary life changes or resulting in low treatment adherence. Consequently, one of every five heart attack survivors over the age of 45 will have another heart attack within five years of their first. Patients need innovative tools that provide actionable information in the critical days and months following hospital discharge. That's for why, through the AHA Inside model, the association is developing my Cardiac Coach, a new mobile app that aims to educate and engage patients, empowering their recovery using the association's Connected Heart Health Cardiac Rehab Care Plan, an evidence-based program developed collaboratively with AHA volunteers. The primary objective of My Cardiac Coach is to engage survivors in secondary prevention through engaging contact that will help them learn, achieve, and manage. Through interactive lessons around the life simple seven topics such as high blood pressure, cholesterol, weight, nutrition, blood sugar, smoking sensation, and physical activity, as well as medication adherence, patients can learn about their condition, associated risk factors, and necessary lifestyle changes. The app also personalized goal setting to help uh, patients adopt better self-management skills and healthier li lifestyles. Finally, um, using My Cardiac Coach, patients can manage their condition through tracking their treatment plans and health data. My Cardiac Coach is still being de uh, developed. Beta testing will start this fall. The American Heart Association guiding values of meeting people where they are. Technology can help us meet patients where they are, a patient-centered solution. 
So as I mentioned, beta, te uh, beta testing will begin in November, um, testing my cardiac coach with real patients, both in and out of clinical setting. And as I mentioned to you before, it can't happen fast enough for me and my family. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Mario Muscucci from Ambio Health. Thank you. Um, good morning. Um, I'm an interventional cardiologist who most recently became fascinated by the challenges of ma uh, managing patients with heart failure. I'd like to say that I don't go anywhere without my smartwatch. I have my ECG alive. And the only reason why I'm wearing a tie today is because it's my first uh, uh, tech meeting. So I learned something from Eric today and will never happen again. <laughs> so um, as you know, patient engagement and the use of remote monitoring system have been the focus of intervention from chronic disease management. However, the feasibility and value of uh, combining remote monitoring system with the intervention developed to promote patient engagement has not been fully evaluated. The objective of our study was thus to evaluate the combined value of the Ambio Health Telemonitoring System, the American Heart Association Connected Heart Healthcare Plans, and a hospital-based heart failure disease management program on preventing 30 days readmission and promoting patient engagement in an inner city patient population in Northwest Baltimore. As you know, the American Heart Association Connected Heart Health Program was developed to translate guidelines and statements in evidence-based uh, patient-centered uh, care plan. The care plans focus on medication, nutrition, physical activity, and patient goals. The Ambio Health Remote Monitoring System includes a gateway uh, connected to a cellular or Ethernet router and several meters, including a wireless scale and wireless blood pressure and glucose meters. It provides access to the American Heart Association care plans, and it promotes patient and physician interaction uh, through a clinician and patient uh, portal. We report here on uh, 23 patients who have completed at least 30 days of follow-up in our pilot study. Overall, there were a total of 2,980 uh, follow-up days. The age was 65, 13 patients were women, and 22 patients were uh, black. The patient population had a relatively high frequency of comorbidities, including hypertension, diabetes, and atrial fibrillation. The overall engagement with the program defined as any day during which the patient either recorded biometric or was engaged with the care plans was 70%. There was variability regarding compliance with different measurements. The highest compliance was observed on with glucose monitoring in the group of patients who due to diabetes received a glucometer. The overall compliance with the assessment and education was 17 and 11% respectively. We discussed yesterday about how to manage information and how much information. Uh, during the study period, there were a total of 2,249 warnings or alerts. The most frequent alerts were for elevated glucose, followed in sequence by alerts for elevated blood pressure and changes in weight. The intervention that were performed based on the alerts included 42 medication changes, 30 instances during which symptoms were reported and managed, and 117 calls and follow-up. In addition, five patients were referred to the Diabetes Resource Center because of elevated glucose, and the blood pressure and weight trends were reviewed with the patient at each uh, clinic visit. At 30 days, uh, the heart failure readmission rate was 13%, one patient at day one, one at day three, and one patient at day 16 from enrollment, while the all causes readmission rate was 17%. During a total of 2,980 patient follow-up days, there were five readmissions for heart failure, two in the same patient, and 11 all causes remission, four in the same patient. Projection based on US average would have been 21 all cause remission for the same uh, follow up time. In conclusion, there was good overall engagement with the program for biometric monitoring. There were trends toward low long term remission rates when compared to national average, and there was a high level of nursing involvement managing patient. Limitation of our study. Uh, obviously include a small sample size and the lack of a comparative uh, group. Thank you very much for your attention. Next we have, Next we have John McKelly from MediSafe. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. 
this morning, and I want to thank AHA for involving MetaSafe in this special event. I'm here to present MetaSafe, the personalized medication management platform, which addresses the $300 billion healthcare problem in the United States, which is 10% of total healthcare costs in the US, and 106 billion of the 300 billion is associated with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and diabetes. And I'm sure you all know this, but just to get us all grounded in the same statistics, it is a huge quality of care issue, both in terms of increased mortality as well as increased hospitalization. Every four minutes, a patient dies from a non-adherence-related death and 700,000 over and underdose emergencies in the US each year. So what is MetaSafe? We are not a glorified alarm clock or a pill reminder. Forgetfulness is a big problem in non-adherence, but it is not the only one. So MetaSafe, from the very beginning, sought to address this problem holistically, not just for forgetfulness, but fear of putting chemical in your body, fear of side effects, cost of the medications, lack of support, lack of motivation. It is a different problem for every patient, and we do this in a truly personalized fashion, understanding the unique situation of every patient. I'll show you how in a second. It is also a platform, not just an app. We all know that in healthcare, we have an interoperability problem, or lack of interoperability, fragmentation. And so with MetaSafe, we sought to connect various stakeholders in the care continuum. In the center of that screen, in that diagram, you see an app. It is what the patient downloads to their mobile device. It is how a patient interacts with the platform. But it is not the only way. You can see an Apple Watch. Basically, we can sync with wearables. We're also connected with Google Fit. A connected pill bottle cap that we're shipping later in the fall that, when opened, can communicate to MetaSafe that the patient has taken the medication. And also, being able to share adherence data with providers, doctor, nurse, pharmacist, through a visualization layer that's built on top of our API and can be integrated with EMRs. In the spirit of AHA Inside, I wanted to share with you that we can co-brand MetaSafe, and we have done so for AHA. And so what you see here are some welcome screens that the patient would see as they get into MetaSafe. This is not a white label solution for AHA, so the patient can add all of their medications, not just their heart medications to MetaSafe, so we can understand the patient holistically, not just their heart conditions. In addition to being able to manage your medications on MetaSafe, and this is where the special sauce comes in. And by the way, the way you get your medications into MetaSafe is either by entering them one at a time, by connecting with databases on the back end that include medication lists, pill shape and color, uh, markings on the pill so you can match exactly to the pill that you are prescribed. But you can also import all of your medications from CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Walmart, and Epic MyChart. This is Diavan. Diavan is used to treat high blood pressure, which may reduce your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. So we call this the feed, this section, which once the patient starts taking action within the app, this patient was prescribed Diavan for hypertension. You just saw a video that began that instructs the patient how to take their medication, reminding them why they're taking it. The feed can also support content from third parties like AHA, so we can put in uh, support tools, empowerment programs. And we also have a, license, a library of licensed content to, support, to supplement that. Here's a graph that I wanted to share with you. And again, this is about personalizing uniquely to the patient. It's a feed much like you would find on LinkedIn or Facebook that really seeks to understand the patient based on information on their profile and every action or inaction they take in the app. So this patient is at a Diavan, and it prompts them to add a measurement, their, high, their blood pressure. We support 22 measurements either entered manually into the app or imported from a connected device, in this case through Apple Health Kit. And what you see here is as the patient's adherence improves from red dot to green dot, 
the blood pressure improves. And this serves as motivation or an intrinsic reward system telling the patient it's working and motivates them to continue the behavior change, i.e. taking the medication. More actionable content. I'll just give you a quick flavor of what we mean by telecare. So imagine that the patient missed a couple of doses in a row or adherence fell below a certain key threshold like 80%. The logic and rules in this feed automatically insert a card that says, you may be having trouble with your medication. Contact your nurse right away at this hotline. So this is just, of course, the very beginning. I invite you to come to our booth, which is uh, now located in the, uh, where we had breakfast this morning, and learn more. We've done studies, research that validate uh, the MetaSafe in the clinical setting. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Eric Hazard from Tupelo Life. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Hazard, and uh, it is a pleasure to be here. I'm the Life Sciences and Research Director of Tupelo Life, and I'm even more uh, here, I'm really happy to be here, because I've actually had three open heart surgeries in my lifetime. And being here today, knowing that the science that's been going on for 92 years, I know has played a role in that. So we are a connected health company, and we are driven by the belief that everyone has intrinsic value and worth and deserves quality health care. With offices across three continents, we provide innovative health solutions that lead to improved outcomes. We know that the best care is personalized and precise, and we know that technology can make that a reality for everyone. Our solutions are comprised of hardware, including devices and sensors, software, apps, portals, communication gateways, and a host of services ranging from analytics, machine learning, to technology and operational support. But we're here today to talk about AHA Inside, and many of our programs feature and are designed around the AHA. We, use every, we utilize everything from care plans and guidelines to curated content and Life Simple 7. Tupelo Life has AHA Inside. One specific example is Check Change Control, the evidence-based blood pressure management program which uses remote monitoring, mentoring, and a web portal tracker to empower patients to take ownership of their cardiovascular health. So our process was we met with AHA staff, both national and affiliates, to better understand the needs of every stakeholder, to understand where people are coming from. And using innovative and cutting edge architecture, we designed and executed a completely new solution to support AHA's 2020 impact goal. The new solution is called the Check Change Control Tracker. I'm very excited to say the tracker is actually launching on Monday. We have our first training, and we'll be able to roll and start registering participants. And this enables the national rollout of the Check Change Control Program. So key features include quick and easy registration. This is important in community events where you have a lot of individuals um, at a church or a local gathering trying to get registered. We also look at multiple measurements or multiple ways to add BP readings. We've uh, added robust admin functionality reporting and a tiered access structure. Again, it's looking at everybody's perspective and seeing how do we be meet the needs of every stakeholder, admin, participants, health mentors, and providers. So with one, URL uh, with one URL, we can register participants, health mentors, providers. They can quickly register, log in, and start doing the work they need to support each other in managing their hypertension. Registration is streamlined, and a dashboard homepage are designed to support program-centered components specific to each stakeholder. For example, for a participant, when they log in, they automatically see the screen that says, take a reading, and see what their readings are looking like. Participants can track their readings and see their readings categorized based on AHA guidelines, giving them that sense of knowing, well, what is my blood pressure? Where does it fit? And how do I continue to take steps moving forward? In addition, Participants can chat, access resources, set reminders, activate texting for both text reminders and adding BP readings, allowing them the flexibility to take out their smartphone, get a text and go, oh yeah, I need to get my BP reading in, send that back, and it goes into the system. Health mentors and providers can quickly connect, manage, and support all of their participants and identify those folks who need a little extra help and support. They can quickly stratify and say, look, oh wow, this person hasn't taken a reading in a while. Can I quickly reach out to them and send them a message? And a really key aspect is the admin portal, which allows AHA staff to easily manage the program, 
and provide operational uh, focus, communicate to participants, and quickly drill down to the data to create any report and any sort of de-identified data set that helps enable all the researchers here to take this data and continue to great research that goes on here at AHA. So on behalf of Tupo Life, I appreciate your time and attention. Please come visit us at our booth, and we'd love to carry on this conversation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Eric. Next, we have Dr. Vera Anantha from Constant Therapy. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Vera Anantha, founder of Constant Therapy. We're working with the AHA and Big B Labs to create a stroke navigation tool for patients and caregivers. Constant Therapy's mobile solution and platform today is enabling thousands of stroke survivors to regain their speech, language, and cognitive skills. It is already used today at top rehab hospitals around the country. We've delivered over 25 million therapy exercises to patients already. In fact, just last month, we delivered over 8,000 hours of therapy to patients at home. Now, by analyzing all this data, we can start getting incredible insights into what types of therapies work for different types of patients. Now, let's take Pat, for example, who just had a stroke. His wife goes to the stroke navigation tool looking for resources and indicates that he had a stroke six months ago, has aphasia, and provides other details about his condition. Using data from other users, we can now start providing guidance on what he can expect with sustained therapy. For example, patients who started out with difficulty reading basic words showed significant improvement in their reading abilities after six months of constant therapy. With this, Pat decides to augment his speech therapy in the clinic with constant therapy at home. A personalized program is automatically created for him, selected from 65 categories of clinically proven therapies developed by world's leading experts in stroke rehabilitation. As he starts his therapy at home, he's given the auditory command task to work on improving his uh, comprehension and naming skills. And it goes like this. Place the trophy to the left of the anchor. Then place the broccoli above the trophy. Now, if Pat has difficulty with naming objects, uh, he'll tap on them to learn what they are, like this. Trophy. And in fact, Everything that Pat does is measured by constant therapy, uh, not just his speed and accuracy. This helps to tailor the therapy specifically for his needs so that it can advance with him as he progresses. And Pat's wife can visit the stroke navigation tool periodically to see how much progress he has made compared to his baseline scores in skills such as reading. Now, this is all great, but let's actually listen to a real uh, uh, stroke survivor Mary, who's been using constant therapy. I am a teacher, and I had the ABM for uh, like three months. I didn't talk at all. A constant therapy is uh, miraculous for me. And every year, I have made progress. Even the superintendent of Lynn Public Schools uh, just saw me uh, Tuesday, and she said, Mary, you talk almost perfect, and I said, oh, thank you. Now, that is priceless, and it shows us you know, how we can use technology and data to enable patients to lead more fulfilling lives. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think there are uh, some great examples of AHA partners there, and I think even what's more impressive is they can summarize their entire business model in three minutes.